The most serious allegations yet in the LTT saga. AMD's ripping Threadripper. And we're getting new AMD GPUs next week. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your bright host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Thursday, August 17th, 2023. Didn't mess it up that time. Thank you. You're welcome. I had to double check. And we're going to start off today on a very serious note, especially at the end of the the LTT segment yesterday, I talked about how I was not planning on covering this anymore unless something major came up. And unfortunately, something major did come up in between the time that we filmed and the time the video got published. Not the least of which was LMG releasing their own apology, what do we do now video, which I recorded a quick addendum for at the end of the segment in yesterday's hot news. But there were a lot of things that were brought up as potential oversights for the team at LMG. Number one, there was several jokes that didn't land properly with, I think, many of the audience. Additionally, they published the amount of the prototype of Billet Labs when that was specifically requested not to happen. The team then went on to blur it in the YouTube video. And then after that, they were called out for having the video monetized. And then they said they heard the feedback from the community and from their team internally and monetization has been turned off for the video, which just seems very poignant that one of the videos that was brought out to address the fact that they are going too fast and making too many errors, this would happen. But one of the biggest comments and biggest allegations that came out yesterday, right before Linus published his video and right before our hot news came out was something with Madison, who was a previous employee of LMG. This was one of the top comments when I first watched the LMG video. And it turns out that at 2 a.m. on the previous day, Madison Reeve, a previous former employee of LMG, talked about a lot of hostile work culture issues that are happening at LMG, as well as sexual harassment and potentially even some form of grabbing incidences that happened, saying that I chose to quit my role at LTT because it and the working environment I was facing were ruining my mental health. My work was called dog. I was called incompetent when I would reach out to managers, try to get help with these situations. I would be told to put on my big girl pants and be more assertive, which starts the very long Twitter thread of a very detailed recording of a lot of things that Madison claims to have been subjected to during her time at LMG. Again, including things like reporting that she had been inappropriately grabbed multiple times in the office and that no matter who she talked to or if she spoke to someone with evidence of an abuse of power or inappropriate workplace behavior, it was considered tattletailing. Additionally, talking about going to the lengths of self-harm just to get a day off because of the grind set that happened to be present with many of the employees and the management who was expecting her to work more than she possibly could. Additionally, including things like being asked sexual history, both for her and her boyfriend, friend and certain issues being sexual tension and she could take the co-worker out on a coffee date to ease it out. Being asked to twerk for a co-worker, being called chunky, fat, ugly, stupid, as well as several other slurs, as well as being tasked with managing the OnlyFans account, despite her asking to not be put on that role, discussing how she had to read comments about people wanting to perform sexual acts with her and her co-workers, as well as seeing people's genitalia, which was something she said no to, but was told only a little while longer. And then concluding it with, why didn't you take legal action? She says, I just quit my job, was scared of this company, felt like I was worthless, and personally, I don't have millions of dollars to throw out legal fees. Additionally saying, when I left, I was told that they would announce I parted ways from the company on WAN Show. I said no, unless you make sure you clearly state that I quit. They never mentioned it on the WAN Show. But in her post, she does mention that there are genuinely amazing, compassionate, incredibly intelligent people who work at the company and are driven to just share the cool tech that they love. It sucks that ego and a bottom line are just slowly destroying some of them and hurting the entire reputation of the company. So all of this coming out as pretty damning allegations against LMG and the team there. The apology video that was released by LMG yesterday did not cover any of this, and it continued to pick up a lot of steam on the internet with many people calling for there to be a response from Linus and the team with regards to these allegations that are happening here. And that finally came in the form of a Verge article that came out yesterday with Linus saying in email, I was in a state of shock reading through these allegations, plain and simple. They aren't consistent with my recollections. They aren't 
consistent with our internal processes. They aren't consistent with our company values. We pride ourselves on maintaining a safe and inclusive environment. In addition to our existing report systems, both anonymous and otherwise, we've proactively reached out internally today to encourage members of our team to report any workplace bullying or harassment they might be experiencing so we can take quick and decisive action. Our HR team will be conducting a more thorough assessment of the allegations, and when we are ready, we will release a more complete statement. For now, I would ask that we allow our team the time they need to be as thorough as possible. With the CEO of Linus Media Group at this point, Taryn Tong, stating that he was shocked at the allegations and the company described, and then he went on to note that as part of this process, beyond an internal review, we will also be hiring an outside investigator to look into the allegations and will commit to publish the findings and implementing any corrective actions that may arise because of this. This is a situation that obviously scales well beyond getting a GPU review wrong, scales well beyond selling a monoblock. This is a separate class of problem that is being presented against LMG and the team there. We want to catch everybody up to date because this has been circulating, but additionally, because there are comments that were presented by Linus as well as the new CEO from LMG. Again, hopefully we will not have to continue to discuss this here on Hot News in that um, we can wait for more official reports to come out later down the line. Again, another addendum that I'm gonna be adding here in hot news as it is currently 5 a.m. There's more information that broke overnight from other former employees of LMG specifically with Colin, who used to be a former writer over at LMG, who left on amicable terms to go work for another company, detailing in response to this whole situation on Twitter, as well as on Reddit saying, Overall, we made technical errors all the time. Most get caught. Selling the prototype has an element of Occam's razor isn't excusable either. Madison's posts today are in line with what I remember hearing back when we were colleagues, and it takes mad huevos to post that. Additionally saying more than anything though, I'm happy to hear they're refactoring. It's a long time overdue, and I'm hopeful for my friends still employed there. We'll see how it goes. I suppose it can improve or implode. With regards to the whole situation, specifically on Reddit, he responded directly to the Madison situation a bit more concisely saying, sure, I can say that I talked to Madison often about the hardship she faced while employed at LMG, and I also helped her to find that next job to get out. I'm not her, so what she has to say is just hearsay because I don't have a first person account of much of anything in that post. But that said, the story as she's told it in the post today is as I remember it back then. So corroboration by a fellow former employee that these details at least do match up with Madison's timeline of employment there. Additionally, there is a recording making the rounds of an all hands meeting that happened after Madison's departure at LMG where Linus and Yvonne go through the detailed procedure of how you should report harassment, which bring up steps such as go to the person who offended you, then go to Linus and Yvonne, and then go to a third party HR firm, which brings up major conflicts of interest of if the person who is abusing you is the person you have to go to, that is less than ideal situation. Additionally, going to the head of HR who is married to the head of the company does bring up conflicts of interest, which back when Madison departed the company, Yvonne, Linus's wife, was still head of HR that has now shifted to Colton, at least as of the time, and the description that he gives of himself in their apology video that they released. Additionally, at the end of the video, the head of writing appears to make a joke about Linus dancing on the table, which many people are thinking is in bad taste about making a sexual joke at a sexual harassment HR orientation. Madison responding to both the recording as well as Linus's comments to the media, saying that in that recording, you will hear someone make inappropriate jokes. You will hear the situation be belittled. You'll also hear that there is an internal want for you to go directly to whoever wronged you and have a one-on-one -on -one chat, removing any sort of HR interference. Imagine someone calls you dog and the response you get is, oh no, go talk to them about it, but it keeps happening and there is no record of it because you were instructed to just go talk to them, not HR who also just so happened to be an active owner of the company. Concluding with, I'm baffled to hear about the shock of the allegations. You're not shocked that they happened. You're shocked that someone said something. You're probably shocked because you know evidence for most of these issues is scarce, so why would anyone risk their image to speak out? Again, this is a developing situation. Corroboration from another former employee who left on more publicly agreeable terms with LMG. Now showing that the story that Madison's telling on Twitter is still consistent with the one that she told back during her employment. We'll obviously continue to look for the details of the investigations that play out over at LMG, but I wanted to include all of these details here in Hot News because they do appear to be relevant to the story and paint a more fuller picture of what's going on. And now because this 
is a tech news show. We're gonna to continue to cover the tech here. Obviously, this is a heavy subject matter. Additionally, if you are struggling with mental health issues, we'll have links to resources down below that you can reach out to in case you feel this way. Additionally, I mean, as a business owner and somebody who understands what a difficult, grueling work schedule can look like, we are also reevaluating our processes to make sure that nothing like this happens behind the scenes at all, that we all feel like there is a place where things can be reported, there's a place where this can be discussed, and that there is no sense of, I will never give you a day off, or that you have to do something horrible in order to make sure that you, you can get free of this work environment. Yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna move into the tech news. It's gonna be a completely different note, so let's start with that. AMD's Threadripper looks to be ripping some threads. We have some benchmarks coming out of the 7995WX, which is supposed to be just insane, 96 cores. I'm checking those numbers. 5.1 gigahertz of the boost clock on a single core, has an all-core boost clock of 4.5 gigahertz, has 50% more core count than the previous generation of the 50. 995 WX. Clock speeds are definitely up, but in the leaked benchmarks, it looks like it's 26% faster when it comes to single core performance and 49% faster in multi-core performance than its previous generation. This is not gonna be something that casual consumers buy whatsoever. It's just kind of cool that it exists. Threadripper has come a long way from what it used to be. Oh yeah. Which used to be like, we had a, I built Kaplan a Threadripper system because yeah, it was we, like- We were rocking that for quite a while. It was accessible. You could get 16, 32 cores in a reasonable price point. It was was more high-end desktop, not workstation. They're now workstations. I'm never gonna buy one of these. The Epic version of this chip costs like 11 grand. So this is probably gonna be somewhere close to that. Not happening, but it's really cool. Just think of how many Windows Media Player you could open. People wanna open Chrome tabs. Why aren't we opening Windows Media Player? Exactly. What the heck is wrong with us? I don't know. But also Intel also launching CPUs. ASRock confirming in a Weibo post that they definitely are gonna be participating in the Raptor Lake refresh launch that's gonna be happening in October. This has been rumored to high heavens. 14th gen supposed to be coming out in October. These new motherboards are supposed to have better support for it. DDR5 6400 appears to be the baseline. Allegedly, according to ASRock's post, the flagship is supposed to have between four and 8% better performance on single core and eight to 15% performance increase on multiple multi-core, which would mean as long as it's the same price, it's an okay generational improvement. It's on the same architecture. It's just been refined it, for a year on year improvement, especially considering how little the upgrades have been in so many other sectors yeah. with price increases. As long as Intel doesn't raise, raise the price, I think we're okay here. But you know who helps you to not raise prices? This Me. guy with deals. Pull my finger. How am I pulling your finger? How'd that work? It's magic, just like today's deals. And starting off on the extreme budget end, we have this ADA XPG Premier DDR5 RAM kit featuring 16 gigs of RAM at 4800 megahertz at CL40, going for only $49.99, making it $90 off. And honestly, one heck of an entryway into DDR5. I think my personal favorite Dance Dance Revolution was one and a half. No, 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 no. Three is the stuff. Okay, that's my bad. But then next up, we have a combo deal with the Sama 35098. ATX mid tower case. And keyboard combo. And for ADR RGB fans. Wow. For only $79.99, making it $120 off the combo price. And if those four fans aren't enough for you, you can pick up the Cooler Master Sickle Flow 92 120 mil fans, going for only $6.99 for a one. You know, you can pick up a lot. Why is it called 92 if it's 120 millimeters? I don't know. 92 would, but well, it's 92 millimeters. What's Cooler Master doing? I don't know. Okay. What, it's Cooler Master. You know what's cooler? What? This transition. That wasn't cooler at all. I lied. I'm sorry. But you know what is a great deal, Reese? When a company says that they're going to support repairability and then they actually do it, which appears to be what Google's moving forward. Google. With. Google with iFixit. The Pixel 7a now having repair parts available over on iFixit, just like they promised that they would do. You can get all the parts that you would expect in order to fix things. And additionally, they're gonna be moving forward with the Pixel Fold next, gonna have repairable parts, which you love to see it. You've got the screen, you got the adhesive, you got camera holders, a ton of different parts for you to fix on your Pixel 7a. Good move by Google, you love to see it. I wanna see this with more companies, ROG Ally. 
Nick chiefly should be happening at some point. But you know what's gonna be impossible to repair because of like structural battery packs and stuff? No. The Cybertruck from Tesla. And we're finding out that they're shipping a lot of them. There's been a lot of videos coming out, people Ooh. spotting them on the road on the back of trailers, including ones that allegedly have been used for crash testing with a lot of crash marks on them, which makes sense. Makes you have sense. to do that beforehand, especially because Tesla's done fairly well in crash tests, especially in things like rollover testing. It's because of the battery packs. They don't typically flip over. It's intriguing. We're getting closer to a Cybertruck launch. I wanna see one in the wild. I, I had a dream about one, I guess. It's, now I'm realizing I thought I actually saw one, but no, that was a dream. Uh, and I thought it was ugly in my dream, oh. which, you know, we'll see. <laughs> I, might, I might think the same in person. Yeah. And people think that the way NVIDIA is handling GPUs is a little ugly, but we now just have more details as to why. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> Thank you. Reports are coming out from Financial Times that NVIDIA is expecting to sell 555,000 H100 GPUs, half a million, which would gross them about $25 billion in revenue. Hot dang. When was the last time you spent 25 billion with NVIDIA, Reese? Ooh, it's been a while. It's been a while, and that's exactly why they're now selling AI cards, because we gamers aren't gonna give them that type of cash flow. Yeah, it's not And that's just from one set of GPUs. That doesn't include at all their entire other product line. H100 alone, 25 billion. That's- The age of gaming is over. Which you would think, except for AMD's here with Gamescom. That was too fierce, I'm sorry. Scott Herkelman announcing that they actually are gonna give us a little good something at Gamescom next week, saying that they will have major product announcements. What could ever this be besides the 7800 XT and 7700 XT that we're expecting to be released? It's possible they might have something else mighty fine up their sleeves. Likely not. AMD doesn't typically launch things secretly that haven't been disclosed to the public beforehand via leaks and other stuff. So maybe there's something else good. I'm curious what the prices are gonna be here. The 7800 XT, I don't see how, especially with the GRE going for 649. Yeah. Like you have to charge like 499 for that. And I don't see to them doing that. make it make that. sense and it's... Yeah, and then the 7700 XT, I just, I don't see a lot of this being reasonably priced. I, I see it being, well positioned against Nvidia, but not being like the obvious no brainer choice, which hopefully AMD could prove me wrong, but more than likely they're just gonna announce the games in Fortnite again. And Bicycle 2. Bicycle 2 electric go juice. It's an electric bike. <laughs> there we go, it that makes, makes sense. sense. Hey, all right, that's gonna be the end of this episode of Hot News. We'll catch you back here for more of the hottest tech news tomorrow, hopefully with no coverage of the Linus situation.